Hey guys, welcome to the channel. And today, uh, it's a nice summer morning. It's about six o'clock in the morning, going for a gravel ride. And it's only about my, and it is only about my uh, fifth ride on this gravel bike. So uh, let's see how it goes. Some changes I've made already is that uh, I've swapped the 42s out to 47s. See that makes a bit of a difference. I've also uh, lowered the tire pressure. Let's see how that goes. And uh, today's ride, hopefully about 80 k's. I'm gonna head out here, uh, out towards the plots, then out towards the farms, back again. It's gonna be about 80 k's, I'm hoping. Pretty flat uh, in relative terms, just under a thousand meters or just about there. So come along and join me and let's do this thing. So as you can see at this part of the ride, um, gravel's pretty good, nice and smooth. Still playing a bit of the setup of this bike. So I uh, haven't got it quite dialed in yet. This is a road that takes us to the cow house. Summer here now in South Africa. So uh, everything will start turning green hopefully. Had some rain last week so that's going to help. I must say one thing I love about the gravel bike compared to the mountain bike is the way the gearing works. On the brake levers as opposed to shifting with your thumb. I think I need the cable changed on my cam because my thumb's pretty sore. Or maybe get electric, but uh, yeah, I don't think that's in the future. Coming up to the cow house now, popular mountain bike uh, venue, and it's got a restaurant and stuff down the bottom there. But I uh, won't be going past there, turning right, and then uh, out towards Rosemary Hill. Also, another mountain bike uh, section. As you can see, it's nice and quiet this time of the morning. Beautiful weather, although it's going to get pretty hot today. Let's say about 30 degrees Celsius. So uh, that's going to be a, a scorcher out there. We're heading off to uh, Rosemary Hill now. Morning. First little bit of an uphill today, just to get the legs going, a little blood flowing. Okay, turn right here to go into the back of Rosemary Hill. Two ways you can either go left there and around, or in the back here. But uh, going in the back entrance. You should actually have a wristband so to show you a member of a club or something you paid your fees. Okay, approaching Rosemary Hill now. <coughs> Interesting thing about Rosemary Hill. Very popular wedding venue and uh, mountain bike park. 
I really take a lot of time to keep the track and the whole just general area tip top condition. I just done this path here, which I'll now take full advantage of. So if you are in the area as you can pass, have a look, you can get cool drinks, food here. Yeah. Come around and check it out. You can stay here if you want that as well. Yeah, these new tire pressure settings are much better. I've used those websites, I don't know, you enter your weight of bike, all that stuff that comes out in some crazy PSIs. And it's just far too hard for this area I'm about to ride. So, I don't know, maybe I'm not entering this stuff correctly, but basically running 21 in the front and uh, 23 at the back, that's PSI today and let's see how that goes got a single track action here Approaching uh, what's called the Hrunak or the Green Gate, and uh, yeah, this is basically the gateway to the rest of the area here. Morning, 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 morning. Hi. So the shortcut to the right here. We're going to be going down to the railway line. But uh, in the spirit of gravel, I will carry on riding this corrugated road ah yes the pleasure of a tarred road road is extremely corrugated so uh, so keep the left here and that's one thing uh, I grab a bike and teach you and that is you choose your lines recently done this road with this type of stone which is actually quite difficult to ride on luckily it's uh, for the whole road just for sections of it this section is called the railway line and uh, stretches for quite a long way I mean obviously the railway line stretches for hundreds of kilometers but this section that we actually ride right 10 or 20 k's you can ride along this road and then uh, 
you know your way further, you can actually go all the way to a place called Witkoeki, which I'm going to today, but not on this road. I'm going to uh, turn off a little bit and rather go through the plot that way around. But as you can see, it's uh, so nice and peaceful out here. And I guess that's what cycling is all about. Getting out here into the country. And just enjoying your surroundings. Going up to uh, Borskop Road. Then I cross over this and carry on with a railway line. Up to uh, what we call the tree. I always tell my wife, I was going out to the tree and back and she always asked which tree. So uh, I'll show you now which tree. You can see, uh, yeah, there's a lot more rain out here than where I came from. But uh, it's good, we need the rain, it's very dry. It's a nice section here, that was a smooth. I think this is what they refer to as champagne gravel. But unfortunately it doesn't last that long. But I'll enjoy it while it lasts. Along this main route, I mean over there obviously on the side there's trees. And that's why I always say we ride to the tree and back because it's basically the first tree, the real tree along this uh, section which we're going to approach shortly and in South Africa you'll see you ride on the left hand side of the road well I'm on the right now but uh, when you get other sections you'll see that and uh, that's the reason for it so coming up to the our famous tree on the left, to the godhouse on the right. Let's give a last little push here. Okay, so that's about 28 kilometers from my house and uh, measuring about 21 k's per hour average. Okay, so on the other side of the railway line now, we've got two choices here. You can either go straight, carry on along the railway line for Whitworky, or I can go left, which I'm going to do, and then go out onto the road, cross the bridge in the front there, and then uh, back into the plot, and then from there it goes out into farmland. So I'm going to go out there, over the bridge, into the plots and then circle the big circle round and then come back out here again 
over the plot, uh, over the railway line, and then back again. But as you can see, this grass is recently burnt, and now with the rain, you can see the nasty green shoots coming out. And over there, you can see it even better, that whole field's gone green. I mean, uh, this is really an amazing time of the year. And everything basically springs back into life. Okay, so head up left here onto the main road. And this road here, if you go left along it, will take you out to Cullinan, which a lot of guys actually do. As you can see, road riding is uh, pretty big along this section. to uh, turn here. Okay, just head over the bridge here. Head a little shortcut here on the left. I'll take to get off this main road. Little single track action again. now into a relatively unused tar section okay now for uh, a little bit of downhill again before hitting the gravel just like every other cyclist I love the downhills Kill a dog for me. Hey. Okay, barely survived that. Okay, head left out here, back onto the gravel, and then out to uh, the Twerky. Last four section this. It's up in the front there. Where that green section is is the railway line again. But uh Last road to ride, so gotta go out here. So you can see most of this, these lands over here are actually hit by huge fires. That's why it's so green now. You can really see for miles today. And on the left there, the railway line. So if I went straight to that other section, I'd be coming out there. Quite a nasty piece of road. We're going to be 
sitting right up this hill here. Quite a nasty hill as well. I guess the corn will be downhill. Okay, coming up to the end of the climb now. I must say, uh, this gravel bike did climb easy compared to my mountain bikes. Actually, I don't know why that is. Maybe someone can uh, leave a comment below. Okay, heading left now to Witboy Gear. We'll be on the left hand side. It's just a school. Area is probably called the Quickie, but I'm referring to the school. This road will then become uh, dirt road again, gravel, and then we basically in the farmlands. It's hard to believe that less than six months ago they actually scraped this road and it was uh, pristine champagne gravel and now it's a nightmare. But with the spirit of gravel I will now seek out the best lines on this road. Yeah, we're fishing now in the farmland area. So many donkeys here, but uh, not today. Okay, about halfway in the ride now, and uh, in the farmlands here, so to speak. It always amazes me how I can just leave my house cycling, don't have to drive anywhere, and then uh, <laughs> within, I don't know, 15 minutes or so, I'm in the in the farmland areas. I'm really spoiled and uh, very grateful for that. Um, perhaps we should just have a look at the bike quickly and uh, changes I've made to it so far. So as I mentioned earlier, I've changed the, the tires from 42 to 47. I think it does make a difference. Um, and then I've also tilted the levers here in a little bit. Strange how you set that stuff up in your garage or workshop and then when you get out onto the field or we'll start riding and you see one of them isn't exactly right. But when you're doing it, it feels correct. Uh, so I must just adjust the right one in a bit. I also changed the Future Shock spring over here to the firmest one. Um, last time I see I've forgotten the cap on the top there. And uh, yeah, it was a bit rough on the hands. So I've gone back to the medium one or intermediate spring and uh, strange how you don't think this thing works but it definitely does uh, absorb some of the road chatter along the way I think I'm gonna update or upgrade the seat post next with one of those uh, carbon ones and then uh, maybe looking at upgrading the bars as well maybe someone can give me some advice there in the comments below what you think about the bars I should go to I was just gonna go to the one that's on the crux the carbon one or the diverge i think it's the same one i don't need this bar that comes up at the top here it doesn't really do anything and a quick look at what i brought along to have today i've already had one of these goose i've had the fruit salad one it's a bit sweet for me i've actually changed my my gels from goo to uh sis these are the isotonic ones with water and i think they're a bit better on my easier on my stomach and then I've got some Maynard Jelly Babies. Unfortunately, no, I do not own the company. 
but uh, yeah, I love to eat those things. That always, uh, always a winner on a ride like this. Okay, so heading up the road further, all the way up there, just before uh, Oxbow, turning left and then uh, heading back. Talking a little bit more about the gravel bike. Um, I want to confess, the first time I rode it, I wasn't in love with it. But uh, I find the more you ride this actual gravel bike, the more you sort of adapt to it. It, it actually grows on you. So uh, if you're not loving gravel bikes on your first ride, just stick with it. It actually grows on you. It's, uh, I think it amazes me just how efficient they are. And uh, yeah, due to that efficiency, they're actually quite fast, which I guess is the part that grows on you. And like I said earlier, these things really climb easy compared to uh, a mountain bike. Could be the, the reduction in weight as well. On the other side of this hill is a, what I like to call a bit of a false flat. I think it's actually a bit of a downhill. Feel the heat picking up. Let's have a look. Okay, it's about 23 degrees. So, uh, definitely going to be warmer. Cows over there on the left, or cattle, and uh, must be feeding time because they're all coming to the side there. What's going on there? Hey. Bunch of uh, road cyclists coming over there on the left, on the right. They clearly have not been inspired by the spirit of gravel. back around and uh, back at the railway line here sort of cross that road that goes to Cullinan again and then head up that little path and then over the railway line So 
this morning we well, I rode along that line there up to the tree and now we're going to go back down this little road over here which is actually closer to the railway line up that hilly section again if you made this far into the video thank you very much and as a bonus i'm going to give you a little bit of a taste test to this sis uh, isotonic tropical flavor i haven't tasted it yet but uh let's give it a go it's not as smooth as the the it's called fruit salad fruit salad is more like a like a cool drink but it's very sweet the apple and the pineapple have actual little chunks and this has also got not chunks in very like a granular type texture but it's actually got a very nice taste hmm i think this may become my my new favorite go-to gel at the moment so guys um if you're looking for a gel this is a good gel not sponsored by SIS, but uh, yeah, using them because uh, obviously the isotonic, they seem to be a bit better on my stomach than the other gels that I was using. Okay, so let's carry on with the ride. The only issue with riding right next to the railway track says the road can actually be a bit bumpier than down the bottom there. Coming up to the section which they've been done now with these stones, which is uh, pretty tough going stuff. Okay, that's over. At least not too much wind today either. Normally it's quite bad. Edwin on the way back. This morning we came up that road on the left there. We're going to be crossing over the road today on the way back to the boat tunic when I came out across the road. section was pretty rough going and peeling your hands yeah back at the green gate back slowly past there in case you knock your derailleur off
So guys, gonna end the video off where we started this morning. And uh, let's have a look at the stats. Three hours, 19 moving time, and currently sitting at 81 Ks, and averaging about 24, just over 24 Ks per hour. So guys, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.